What up, everybody? What up, everybody? Let's talk about it. It's April Dawn. What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. This is the final episode of Snowfall Season 6. This is the series finale. Woo! Okay, y'all. I have a lot of thoughts about this episode. Baby, if going out with a whimper and not a bang, personified is this damn TV show. Because Homeboy went out sad, bad, and mad. If you have not watched it, please do not watch this. By the time this video come up, y'all gonna be done watched it anyway. But spoiler alert, just in case you haven't, okay? Don't watch this if you ain't watched the show before. First, I wanna get into a few thoughts about this episode before we start breaking it down, okay? So, these are just some thoughts that I had while watching the show. Feel free to chime in. Last episode, Frank gave a speech to Teddy about how Teddy was you know, this was all about him. It was all about the money. It wasn't about helping our people. It wasn't about this. It wasn't about that. I feel like Franklin basically gave that speech about himself. You and Teddy was two sides of the same coin because for you, it was all about your money. At the end of the day, you was ready to kill your whole family, your best friend, and everybody behind money. Okay? Now, Teddy's addiction was to, like, being a hero. Being the 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 hero that saves the day. That was his thing. He had a savior complex, some weird hero thing, okay? To prove himself. But your addiction was money and power. And once you got more of it, you became just like Teddy was. So to me, that speech kind of went both ways. It was for both of them, okay? Number two, I've already said this, but Franklin was a junkie. He was a junkie for money. And if you look at the end of this episode, when he's looking like a crackhead, he's not a crackhead, he's an alcoholic, but he looks like a crackhead, but his crack is not crack. His crack is money. His crack was power. His crack was everything. And now that he doesn't have it, he's completely defeated. And I don't think that he could, his pride wouldn't allow him to accept help at this point anyway, okay? So I do like the how they kind of left it ambiguous because we never know what could happen to Frank at the end of the day in our minds. He could, you know, five years from now, he could say, you know what, I'm going to the shelter, I'm gonna get my life together, let me call Leon and join the business, something like that. You never know. I feel like Leon will always be a lifeline for this person. So I did like how they didn't, it's concluded in a bad way for now, a sad way, but he's not totally unredeemable as a person. Another thing that stopped him is pride. Pride, baby, comes before the fall. If y'all remember a few seasons back, Scully told Franklin that he was going, his ego was going to have to die. Death of the ego was going to have to die or his whole family was going to get torn apart. And that's basically what happened, okay? Um, another thing I want to point out is Franklin was chasing $73 million at the beginning of this season. And by the time we got to the last seconds of the last episode, he was happy and appreciative for $20. That's a word up in there. Somebody find that. That's a sermon, something that'll preach. You understand what I'm saying? He was happy and appreciative for $20. $73 right here, million in the tip of your fingers. But now you happy to get $20, baby. Which was all he wanted from Leon when they had that conversation. He barely wanted, he wanted to talk to him, but he was bullshitting him so he could get $20. Okay, so he can get $10, really. I feel like Frank's desire to control everything and everyone at all times created an anxiety within himself. This is why he was always lashing out, hitting stuff, punching stuff, but every throwing temper tantrums when things did not go his way. So when, at the end, it struck me when he said, I, I don't have no chains on me. I'm free from your way. I'm free from my way. I'm free from her way. I'm free from their way. I, I'm free from everything. In a way, it gave me, what they call it, respite. It gave me, you know, it made me feel like, okay, he don't have shit, but at least he don't have nothing that's holding him. Um, I think it released that anxiety of having to control everything and having, do you know, that's a lot. Bodies on you, responsible for everybody, and, and you're trying to control everything. That's an anxiety and a problem that I think Frank had throughout this whole series. And now that he's free of that, he really is free um, of all of those things. So. I, I noticed that, okay? I just, I kind of noticed that. Um, and I want to hear what you think about that. Um, he basically in the end became the thing that he hated the most, which was his father who was a homeless, who was who was drunk. 
okay at the beginning of the series he living on skid row i think i think he is homeless on the street so he ends up being the same way um he sounded very defeated when he said let him take that aid and took everything else too okay i feel like this is the way a more ogs end up on the street singing they shoulda coulda woulda's on the corner talking about how they had all this money they had all the holes they had all the clothes but as soon as that supply go or if somebody go to jail all of it's wiped out and now you on the street drunk singing your shoulda coulda woulda's this is a very common story I want to say, I'm not, don't quote me on it, but I feel like John Singleton shared this with us, um, his alternative version for the ending of, or his thoughts about the ending of the show and um, how it should subvert our expectations because we did expect him to die or go to jail and um, how he wanted to show a more realistic, a gritty um, ending, something that was going to be more, like I said, realistic to real life. So I, I think... The writers honored his wishes, and I think they achieved what they set out to achieve, even though it may not, you know, be what we all want or it's what some people wanted, right? But I urge you to understand that this is not a gangster fairy tale. No gangster story has gangsters riding off into the sunset, okay? Very few. Very few. Even the way Rick Ross, who this story is sort of about, loosely based on him, is he didn't even get off scot-free. He went to jail for a very long time. Now, he's still alive now, and he's doing okay now, but he was in prison for a long time. So, you know, prison ain't no fucking... Prison ain't no summer camp, okay? The story wasn't gonna end good no ways, y'all. So let's go ahead and get into it. Frank is broke. Steven calls him and says, listen, if you don't want to go to prison, you need to drop off Ruben to us immediately. And he employs the same method that Louis used to drop him off to Teddy, dropping him in a um, you know, location to let them pick him up. And he tells them, I mean, the whole time Ruben is pleading and begging for his life, but you know, Franklin ain't paying his ass no attention. Okay. Then Frank goes to Leon to get along. This nigga had the audacity to walk up in there and say, I'm going to get there. Let me get the rest of the five million you got. And then I'm going to add on the 500,000. You know, when I get back on my feet, I'm going to pay you 10 times over. Leon tells him no, because Sissy sacrificed herself to save him. And he's not going to disrespect her by giving Frank money and let him back in the business. So Frank is pissed and he threatens to take the money. But as soon as he realizes he's surrounded by all of Leon's homeboys, he backs it on. He back it on up, back it on up, back it on up. Out that goddamn door, okay? Because he knew he was going to get popped. He goes to jail to visit his mom, okay? And his mother is completely silent. She does not talk to him. Um, she doesn't say anything to him. At the beginning of the episode, y'all, he goes into a bar, he gets on the phone, and when he gets on the phone, he calls Veronique and he tells her what happened. And he's kind of like still processing. He's in shock about what has just happened. And so he's sitting there, he's just looking, and we have lots of moments of like surreal moments where the camera swirls around him, nobody's there, everybody's there. You know, it's kind of like my head is upside down. I don't know what to do. My whole world is getting turned upside down, right? So he sits there, he's depressed, and he, he contemplates picking up the liquor and starting to drink. I don't think we see him drink at that point, okay? So after the guy tells him to drop off Ruben, that's when he leaves the bar. And like I said, he goes to see um, Leon, then he goes to jail. His mother, his mother will not talk to him. As soon as he starts talking about money, she gets up and she leaves. She does not want to talk to him. And then he goes home. And while he's at home, he gets a knock on the door, and it's the guy he proposed to doing the, the property with, the deal with. And uh, he says, yeah, I got a call about, you know, let's talk about, give you some numbers about selling this property, whatever properties that they was talking about selling. And he says, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not, you know, planning on selling my stake. And so the guy leaves. And then we see Wanda, she's talking to Leon. She tells Leon she has made a decision that she's going back to Ghana. She really wants him to come, but he said he's not gonna come or whatever, not at this time anyways. So he gives her some money to start a life because that's his wife. Frank then goes to see Veronique. Uh, he spazzes on her, y'all. He basically choked her ass up and was like, don't you ever go behind my back and do no stuff like that ever a damn again. She, he also, but then in the same breath, he tell her why I sold all these properties back to the slumlord, which was mama sissy's boss. Y'all remember the white man? So he sold all the properties that he had in South Central back to the slumlord or to a slumlord, okay? 
He was really trying to make money by any means necessary instead of selling the stakes they had in those properties and keeping their property so that they can live off of those properties, okay? They could have lived off of those properties, but he sold them all trying to float this um, project thing that he had his stake in the project to, to spring whatever project, but you wasn't gonna have enough money to keep paying it because you didn't have no money coming in. So that was the, that's what Veronique was trying to get him to understand. But after he choked her ass up, I'd have collected my shit and left too, cause you ain't gonna be choking on me, not especially now while I'm pregnant and about to be due, okay? We see Leon, she visits Sissy, he visits Sissy, excuse me, and they talk to each other. And basically she tells him, you need to get on a plane and you need to go back to Ghana be with your wife. Spend some time with her. And when you figure out who you want to be in this world, then you can come back and atone for the things that you have done. But, because Franklin is lost, he gone. But you have been the greatest surprise in my life. And she tells him she love him. He say he love her. That mean, it's like his mama at this point. And then, you know, she goes on off to jail. Sissy has accepted her fate. So then we see Frank visiting the bank. He's going to get, you know, some of the money from the deal he just made with this man. Um... He's drinking, y'all. He's 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 drunk. I don't know if he's drunk at this point, but we see him drinking. And uh, the the banker informs him that Veronique has come and she has cleared out the majority of the accounts. It, she probably left him a little change to make it through a couple of months, but she cleared out the accounts. And when baby he goes to the car, his head is fucked up. He is drinking liquor. He is like, baby, I am I am out of it. I don't have any money. I don't have a quarter. Okay. Now, do I feel like Veronique was wrong for taking his money? Yes, it wasn't her money to take, it was his money. But I do think she saw the writing on the wall, which was Frank, if he can grab you and choke you while you're pregnant, he'll slap the fuck out you when he, when he broke his hell, okay? And I always knew that. I don't think, I think Veronique was loyal because she rode with him all the way to the end of the road. But when you start pushing and slapping on the people that's been supporting you and been having your back this time, now it's time to exit stage left. So am I mad that she left? No. Am I mad she took the money? Kinda like, no. I do they feel like she could have left him some money though because it wasn't your money to take in the first place this y'all wasn't married or nothing so you could have left that man 20 g's or something a hundred thousand she took almost eight hundred thousand dollars you could have left that man a hundred thousand dollars that's all i'm saying so frank goes back to sissy this time he's drunk okay and he tells her about veronique taking all the money and leaving and he says all he has is the house left and now he needs to sell that for the money because y'all remember he still has to keep making these payments because he did not sell his stake okay she needs to sign the house over to him she gets up she just stands there she's just looking she's not going to give it up and um he starts to go off on her he screams hollers yells cuss her out you know what i'm saying all that kind of stuff Call her all out of her name and everything. It was terrible to watch him disrespect his mama like that. But we've seen Franklin throw temper tantrums time and time again, so this ain't nothing new. We skip ahead to three months later, and baby, things are not looking good, okay? The extensions have been denied. Um, He has 48 hours, and they're going to foreclose. I'm assuming this is on the properties that he has, you know, that he can't make the payments on anymore. It's not the house, okay? So... He gets a page, and the page is um, from Top, Top Shop. I think his name was Top Shop or something like that. I might have made that up. Top Shop, Top Notch, Top Notch. That's his name, I think. So Top Notch is there to tell him that, no, I did not find um, Veronique. I did not find her. And he tells him, listen, I called you out here to tell you that I'm not doing this for you no more. I think my time, our time has come to an end. He's done all he can do for him, and he's doing it for himself. Um, probably because every time he finds somebody, they end up dead. I'm just saying. So he probably like, I can't do this no more, Frank. And you ain't got no money to pay me anyway, baby. So I'm just coming here to let you know that I got a little information for you on my when I, you know, when I part ways with you. So he gives him some information, and then we see Frank pulling up to a house, and guess who up in the mother is Peaches? Y'all remember Peaches from season five? He stole. Franklin's other stash of five million dollars. He stole that stash and he ran off and we ain't seen the new since. And then he told him he told Kane where he was so Kane could try to kill him or whatever. So he goes in the house. Um he he sees him laying on the couch. Uh we thought that he had AIDS, but y'all, he's just a junkie. So Peach is a junkie. He laying up on the couch, the house is a mess. 
and Frank go up in there like, what's up? You know, you thought you was going to hide from me. You know what I'm saying? Woo -da -woo -da -woo -da -woo. Where's the money? Where's he said he got a safe in the back and he like, I'm going to get up. I'm going to show you where it's at. So as he goes to get up, he tries to shoot Franklin and Franklin shoots him and kills him. Okay. Now Franklin is on a frantic rage running around the house to find the safe and he finds it, but he cannot open the safe. Okay. So this is just like I told y'all, he on some Ahab, white whale, Moby Dick type madman stuff. Like, let it go. When Barry Nee came to him about selling the stakes, he should have sold them stakes. They could have lived off that property that they had for the rest of their life and went on happily ever after. But he is maniacal about this money. He has obsessed with getting this money back. And even we can see at this point, baby, let it go. The money is gone. Okay? So... He calls everybody he can. He finally gets the uh, locksmith to come out there. And as the locksmith is opening the safe, a junkie friend walks up and is like, hey, what's going on up in here? And so Frank chases him out and Frank kills him, which obviously scares the hell out of the locksmith. And the locksmith got to open the door basically by gunpoint. But when he does, he only finds $12,000 in the safe. And so Frank is just like utterly devastated because this was like his last last measure this man done smoked up all this money he smoked up five million dollars worth of crack okay or gave it away or ate with it or bought stuff with it or whatever the case may be right so he's laughing and the guy is like thinking he's gonna kill him he's like i'm not gonna tell nobody i got three kids man please don't kill me or whatever so he tell him to take the money put the money in his pocket and he asked him what his name was i don't know why he asked him what his name was like he wanted to know the person he killed and then as he's walking out the door he shoots him the guy think he done hit the jackpot and you know he'll have a story to tell but he shoots him three times which i felt like was unnecessary you could have let that man go and the dude probably would have not told on you i mean you just gave him twelve thousand dollars so he would have not told on you but whatever and knowing Frank, he probably went and took that twelve thousand dollars out of his pocket. Okay. So then we get another time jump, and it's two years later, and we'll see a car pulling up to a stable, and it's the DEA. They are looking for Louie. We see the people at the stable kind of deflect. They say she was there last winter, but you know she moved on because you know a lot of people. They get a lot of people like that. They always running away from something, but you know um, she's gone now. And but we find out that they are hiding her. So Louie's story basically ends with her being on the run. She been at that ranch for two years. Okay. And so she's going to be on the run forever. I didn't like the way they didn't end her story. I didn't really like that. Okay. We see Gustavo. He's working in the gym. He's coaching little kids on wrestling. And he calls the answering service to which his wife or um, homegirl left a message. And she says they settled in North Carolina. They're doing really good. And they miss him and they want to see him. Gustavo smiled. But part of me was like, Gustavo, don't you bring your ass to America because they're going to take you to jail. Okay? Stay right the hell where you are. Okay? Leon is walking the block and he walked by some kids. It's 1990. Okay, so he goes to Frank's house. Frank's house is falling apart. It's falling down. You know, it's empty. They about to foreclose on the house. He's basically living in squalor. He dirty. He don't brush his teeth. He's unkempt, y'all. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's like, how did you get to this point? Frank was always clean and put together. And, you know, being poor is one thing, but not brushing your teeth is another thing. Like, I, maybe he didn't have running water in the house or something like that. I'm sure that's probably um, an issue in the house. But he looks very bad, y'all. Two years has really wore his ass out, okay? And so, um, he's drunk. He's paranoid. Like I said, he's living in squalor. He says that he goes in through the back because the police don't check the alley. They haven't paid no property taxes in like five years. He invites him in. So we find out that Leon did go back to Africa, Africa one more time. And um, now he's back again. Cause he's like, man, you went came here, you went back, you came back, you went back. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm about to call you a ping pong or whatever he said. So he basically lives in that alley and like squats in the house behind, you know? So, um, he asked about Leon asked about when the last time he talked to his mom, he's like, talk to her, talk to her. I haven't talked to her. I haven't, I, he hasn't seen her. And then he asked about Wanda and has Wanda going back to her first love. You know how somebody from the hood always trying to bring you back to ghetto shit you used to do. And you be like, baby, I don't live there. No, mom do that. Okay. I got a friend who asked me about a boy that I dated in college. Every time I see her and graduated this boy 20 years ago, when I, why don't you stop asking me about him? I don't know nothing about this man. Okay. I don't know nothing about him, but Wanda is, back in america 
or he said she, I don't know if he said she was back in America, but he said she was trying to get into the music business. It's a long story or whatever. Um, so I guess this is what her that's the spinoff plug, y'all. And um, he said marriage ain't easy. You know what I'm saying? And he says uh, Franklin says that Bernie called him and said that he has a son. And she tells him that she's going to raise him right. She's going to break the curse. And, um, you know, for him to take solace in the fact that he won't never be American and raised in America, he's going to have a better life. He's like, I don't know me. A sexy chocolate nigga like me can't keep nobody, okay? I don't understand no women. And they walk by a movie set, and we see the movie is uh, Boys in the Hood. They have the Boys in the Hood clothes on. And if y'all notice that alley that they was in, I want to say that's the alley that pulled up and Ricky got shot to in L.A., okay? I want to say that's the same alley. Y'all let me know. Leon tells him that he started a legal clinic for his people because the law, you know, that law that they made in the 90s, I can't remember what the name of it was, but the law that made crack sentences much more harsher than they were in the 80s was a lot worse than he thought it was going to be. And since everything is backed up, he decided to start a legal clinic for people who need help, okay? And so he says, you can come and you can join the business if you want to, you can help out. Franklin like totally is like, no, I'm good. Like he totally dismisses him. And then he asks him for $10. He gives him $10, he gives him $20. And Franklin is very appreciative of the $20 that he gives him. He's like surprised, like, wow, I got $20. Like, that's cool. So he goes in there to buy some liquor. And when he comes out of the store with a 40, y'all, he ain't buy no alcohol. He, he, he just bought, he bought a 40 ounce. So... He probably need to make that $20 stretch. So that's why he ain't buying no liquor, right? He tells Leon that he knows that the police watched him for a while because he could hear the phones clicking and random people following him. And then he said he called the CIA and, he, and somebody answered the phone and he told them to leave him the hell alone or he going to start talking. And that did it. They left him alone. I don't necessarily, you know, not believe him. You know what I'm saying? I don't necessarily not believe him. Once they figured out he's not a threat, he's a non-motherfucking factor, they don't even care about him no more because nobody's going to believe your crazy rantings and ravings about the CIA on the streets as the homeless person, right? So as they're walking back to the house, the police is coming with a warrant for search and seizure or for seizure of the house because of non-payment of property taxes. And um, Leon is telling him, hey, guy, I will pay your property taxes for you. You know what I'm saying? I can get your house fixed up and everything, you know, if that's what you need me to do. And he says, no, let them take it. They done already took everything else. He tells them, I'm defined, dude. I don't have no chains on me. He says, it's not my way, not your way, not her way, not they way. I don't, I don't have nothing holding me back. I'm free. And then he tells him, you my friend. You are the best friend I ever had. Okay? And Leon cries a little bit. And he says, I am so proud of you. Probably I am proud of you for getting out of this game and not letting it corrupt you like it corrupted me. You kept your money, you kept your woman, you kept your sanity, and you kept your life, okay? And your freedom. And that was way more than Franklin ever did, okay? So that moment gave me a little bit of solace that he has some moments of clarity in his drunkenness, you know what I'm saying, and madness. Like you can tell Frank has lost his mind, basically. And he starts to walk away and Leon is calling him like, Frank, Saint, Saint, he calling him. And he says, I'm good, man, I'm good. And he just keep on walking and we see the trees in the background and that's the end of the show. So I, like I said, I think he's gonna end up like a lot of OGs end up. There's, there's, there's hope for him yet. Maybe he will one day wake up and not wanna be homeless no more because he has support if he needs it. Leon, I feel like will always be a good friend to him and always be there for him when, if he ever wants to change his life. Because when he pulled that gun on Leon, he was like, you really want this shit to end like this? You really want us to end like this? And he says to him, no. Just simple, simple. No, I don't want it to end like this. I don't want our relationship to be like this, but you have brought it to this point. So um, overall, it's sad, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. You know, it a bit. It ought to have just been more satisfying to see him get shot or see him go to jail for a thousand years or whatever the case may be. But I feel like, like I said, John Singleton wanted an alternative ending to the typical drug dealer ending. You know what I'm saying? He wanted something else to happen to show what the majority of people who do this kind of life end up. I felt the cinematography was great on this show. The storytelling, the writing, 
um there are some loose ends i wish that we would tie up like louis is a loose end i didn't really like her ending we didn't get to see scully we didn't get to see einstein did einstein make it to college i feel like that whole you know boys in the hood somebody said something about einstein too the whole boys in the hood thing ricky going to college I'm hoping maybe we can see Einstein in the spinoff that's supposed to happen with Wanda and the gangster rap in the 90s. That's what they saying, y'all. So I hope that we can see those characters like Scully and, you know, maybe Einstein pop up again. You know, maybe even Dion pop up again. You know, Big D. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? But um, it would have been nice to see maybe what happened to Lucia. Lucia was gone, child. We ain't never heard a scene from Lucia ass ever again. Okay, so those kind of things. I wish we would have got a little bit more closure on, especially Louie, y'all, especially Louie. But other than that, I thought it was a good season finale. I Like I said, I think the writers accomplished what they were trying to accomplish, which was definitely realism. So I want to hear your thoughts on this episode. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and share this video with all your friends. And I'll holler at y'all on the next one. Peace.